You are listening to the Health for All podcast and this is your host Sanat Kumar. I hope you enjoy listening. So, a uh, welcome to all our listeners uh, to the Health for All podcast. Uh, today I have um what I call as uh, one of uh, one of the most dynamic uh, individuals I've come across and um, Veronica Chu is on my podcast today. Um she has over 2 decades of experience working with medtech, diagnostics, pharma distribution, health tech and uh, most recently she's known to be a, a serial entrepreneur who's who's uh, you know grown quite a few of those uh, startups both pre as well as post pandemic and during the pandemic so veronica chu i'm super excited to have this next one hour with you um welcome to the health for all podcast thank you sana i'm very very excited to be here wonderful wonderful so uh, veronica you know uh, i was reading up a lot about you and you and i had a quick chat as well um it all started in milwaukee right that's and right yes I, yeah. it almost sounds like a cover of a book but uh why don't you walk me through that story because it's it's really interesting right um, so it started in milwaukee and um and maybe i i could say it started in wisconsin right mm. i um i was born and raised in malaysia and um i decided i had to go out and see the world and that's pre sort of you know beginning of internet time and um i ended up at the um, university of wisconsin in madison during my about second or third year in my engineering school so i got a call from g healthcare um to invite me for an interview for an internship that's kind of how it started so i would say the journey with a little bit by accident i stumbled upon healthcare i never thought i would work in the healthcare industry and uh, ever since then i never left healthcare i did a lot of different things in healthcare but i never left and i i don't think i would do anything else other than healthcare and going forward <laughs> and you know it was um g healthcare was interesting right so g healthcare based in oh uh, Milwaukee Wisconsin i started yeah. as an intern the second internship yeah. and they invited me to 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 join a leadership program yeah i think that was a really great start for anybody's career and i got yeah. to do with different rotations and one of the last rotation i felt um that really resonated with me yeah was in getting into very close to product development yeah, yeah. but on the engineering side the uh, um, supply chain side So then on G embarked into different journeys into emerging markets. Yeah. And uh I felt really strongly about, you know, joining a a team that was doing emerging markets, building products. The, the yeah. vision there was then led by Omar Ishak, yeah. the last CEO of um Metronic. Yeah. Uh his philosophy was interesting and it says that you cannot I'll, I'm going to rephrase it, but the, the idea was you cannot take a a products that were made for America, for yes. the West, yeah, and bring it to India or China and say let's just remove these features, yeah, right, yeah, let's yeah. let's dump it down, make it cheaper, let's just work yeah. on the supply chain. Yes, yeah. it's right, we know we're going to make a cheaper supply chain, but it, it didn't work, and many yeah. have tried that. Yeah, and we need to. in india for india in china yeah. for china that was yeah. the slogan that we we had yeah. and that intrigued me and from then on the journey started right so i finally understand um how do we actually do product development how do mm. we understand the user needs mm. how do we understand the local dynamics right mm. um they are um one of those products that we had in an electrocardiograph yes um became sort of sensation <laughs> in, yes. in our world um mind that that was sort of you know the beginning of an iphone telecommunication yeah. we we had a vision of you know if we how do we make a a cardiac health heart screening products accessible in mm. markets and places that have very little infrastructure mm. Mm. and that's kind of stays with me to now today we, when i think about product development access yeah. right yeah. where this is going to be used um then the product was a pretty big success and um it was an impressed then i then 
then I realized something that's about maybe 2007, eight, nine, around that time. Mm. And we had distribution challenge. So mm. why is it not selling? Um, it's not because the product mm. is not good. It's not mm. because we're lacking some sort of features, right? That's when the salespeople come in and they don't have these features. It's not that. It's simply because that we did not, it was not placed in the right business model. And yeah. it was, GE was not, at the time, you know, I can't speak for it now, was not equipped to sell the product. Mm. I mean, mm. Imagine a sales team that was selling a million dollar MRI machine mm. or even, let's say, $200,000 machine. Mm. Mm. And you ask the mm. sales team, say, like, well, I want to sell this $1,000. I want to sell it to places that you've never sold before. Mm. Mm. That was mm. sort of the kind of the, the distribution challenge. So I became quite intrigued by this problem, right? Mm, and that's mm. when I decided to go to business school, uh, like many people. <laughs> and that's so, the birth of, uh, is that the birth of, because um, uh, I know you were you were heavily part of the team that drove frugal innovation, reverse yes. innovation, right? I know yes. I've, I've read quite a few of the papers that are published. Yes. Um, uh, Professor Vijay Govindarajan, who's also, uh, uh, who happens to yes. be from Tuck, and that's where I went. Right. Um, ah. So, so I've I've read a lot uh, about um, you know uh, just this whole concept of reverse, and and you were part and parcel of that whole uh, that whole journey. Right, right, right. So at the right timing, the um, we were in the team. It was a really close team. I was with an engineering team that we worked together very closely. I spent a lot of time in India and in China and other parts of the emerging markets, you know, Mexico, South America. Uh, so the, the, when we launched the ECG, mm. which is the Mac 400, the Mac mm. I, the Mac, you know, the series mm. of Mac products we mm. launched and that mm. we call the value product mm. at that time. When I remember very vividly when I took the Mac 800 products was made to design by our engineering, engineering team in China uh, back to the U.S., Mm. So I want to mm. test the market and this reception of, you know, would that work in um, some of the smaller practices in the U.S.? I took it. The product was interesting. It, was a, um, it has no full keypad, but it has this mm. T9 keypad. I don't remember, okay. remember like ABC, you have to put like, you have to push like three times to get a C. Yes, right? so yes. We call it a T9 keypad. Um, but at the time, uh, 2008, uh, China already leapfrogged America mm. in terms mm. of the telecommunication adoption That's of right. mobile phone and cell phone. That's right. So for Chinese, anybody there, it's a very intuitive thing to do, right? So to say, oh, no, keyboard is fine because it's very small and portable. They would type, you know, ABC and then to get right. to the name very quickly. And uh, sort of about 2007, 2008, I took it back to, to, to the U.S. team. I was testing with the nurses. Yeah. Uh, and, and the technician there said, what's this thing? We're not going to be, we can't do this, <laughs> right? Then, Because we're used to this bigger machine, yes. keyboard, short keyboard, yes. and printer on the side, and we, we want to do a wireless printer and yes. all this. So, so that didn't take off. Uh, in the U.S., I said, this is not a product we want. Mm. That's fine. So we mm. launched in China and other parts of the market. Just very shortly, just about 2009, we took it back again to the, then the U.S. team started getting excited because that then um, cell phone adoption was high and everybody mm. was understanding the keyboard. Mm. Um, Blackberry was still there, but yeah. <laughs> the personal um, cell phone, right, mobile phone was just having a feature. Yeah. And that is just kind of then, and it became say, well, we want that. It's portable so we can take it and pick it up to different rooms. That was sort of the just of frugal innovation, yeah. reverse innovation, something yeah. that was developed in the emerging markets, brought back into the so-called yeah. developed market and got adopted later. Yeah. Um, and did you see? Did you see any any of those products become successful after there was an initial push, pushback? Yeah. So I, I think that the concept of the portability, right? Yeah. Then the, the, the Mac. It, GE is still selling the Mac products. There were some sort yeah. of version, right, 16, 35 point, like the, the 2000 Mac, 2000. It was derived from the same platform, mm, right? Mm, so Windows mm. platform at the time, right? Um, 
that it got adopted into different markets in mm, Western mm, Europe, mm, right? Mm. They have, as you kind of look across that, and they, people will have similar sort of challenges, right? Mm, you want accessibility, mm. you want exactly. communication. Uh, so it's interesting to kind of see that, right? So we knew that, look, this this should have a place in yeah. those markets and then, then and medical devices, healthcare is being decentralized. Yeah. The technology folks are decentralized. But the, the driving force behind this is obviously a telecommunication advancement. That's right. That's right. right. It wouldn't have happened that we if we did not have you know, the 3G, the 4G, yeah. and the internet being become accessible everywhere. Um, so it's funny enough, and because this all sort of happened in a very short amount of time, right, the three, Correct. four years when we was doing this, um, this team. But when we were first trying to to de- de- develop the product in India, there was no good telecommunication. That's right. We were looking at really satellite technology yes, yes. to send. 200 kilobytes of data, ECG data, <laughs> onto, onto the center. It, it's very laughable, right? It's yeah. just a few yeah. years time, everything we brought. Um, and I think that that's sort of, there's a, always a saying that healthcare kind of falls behind the telecommunication, the technology, um, that but these things are different right now. But at the time, there really was that, right? We followed that because of the infrastructure that was put in place then the medical technology changes instead of having this big sturdy machine that sits at one place. Yeah. And now that we create this portability, um, portable devices that could be taken anywhere. And, and you know, even today, right. One of the biggest challenges we see, uh, even though we've, you know, the, uh, the mobile penetration is a lot higher, we're talking about markets reaching almost 80% of their population, mm-hmm. you know, that has mobile penetration. Mm-hmm. It's the world mm-hmm. of, you know, Insta, TikTok, there's everything happening from every yeah. part of, right? But change management and having your people uh, mm-hmm. accept the change in terms of what is new is, and having them stick to it, right? Uh, is still mm-hmm. is still a challenge, right? That, that we continue, even though yes. we have tools, we have digital media, we have tracking, we have monitoring, right? So when you when you launched the the you know electrocardiogram, and of course it was two hundred mm-hmm. kilo kilo uh, uh, you know bytes of data, you're using satellite. Uh, what was it like from a change management standpoint in terms of actually communicating with the doctors, you know, asking them to start to use this, showing them mm-hmm. the benefits of this, because you were also part and parcel of that, correct? Correct, correct. And I mean, like anything that is new, right? When yeah. we push anything with new, we need to find our early adopters, mm. right? Mm. That people believe in, in yeah. technology. And that's what we did, right? We want to sort of find out the doctors. And, it, it, and you sort of have to solve their pain points and their needs, right? At the same time, so I was just adopt this for the sake of it. And mm. show them the, the benefits. Um, it's I never say it's a smooth process, right? Mm. And the adoption mm. will happen. And adoption is not just GE pushing that because mm. eventually we will have early adopters. Eventually, there's sort of advancement, internet of things, you know, being mm. able to communicate. Mm. Um, it comes along that way. The um, I think sometimes it's not so much about even convincing the doctors, right? Correct. Then we have the users, the, the yeah. operators, yes. right? And then you have to convince the, uh, that was kind of an interesting thesis I was kind of uh, playing, um, working on when I was at yeah. NCI, my B school, yeah. was sort of adoption. Then yeah. you look at the operators that is going to perform this. They need to be skilled and we had to design that as um, India products as no, no, it's just one touch, right? So the kind of it's like yeah. we need to do it as easy as IKEA, because there are many people will be illiterate or they will yes. different languages, right? So yes. we said just push button one, two, three, and it has to be done. So if you look at the original sort of Mac four hundred product, it was like three buttons. Yeah, <laughs> that was it, right? So they, so we we, we use that. Um, we didn't end up using the satellite technology, but we're using sort of. Um, 
memory cards at the time. Mm, mm, um, mm. And then we, just, we started using the landline um, to actually transfer data from uh, the uh, Mac product. But, but you look at this operator, it solves one part of the equation. Correct. Now, the other part is to convince that patients and their caregivers to say that it's okay that you let this guy, the doctor's not here, that this guy will take your readings. Yes. So you kind of just need this sort of local leader, right? So yes. the person is there to convince that uh, it's okay. We'll send this doc data to the doctor and the doctor should come at some time too. Factor um, of trust. So that was kind of the, yeah, the sort of the trust, the, the local leader, the, yeah. the, the, the convince that he can do that. Um, so it's not just a doctor. Doctor might want it because they, they don't want to travel, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so Veronica, if I if I if I were to draw a, a line to say your, you've always been intrigued by um, innovation, right? And innovation from from nothing, right? Uh, and yeah. always trying to trying to figure out how can you make uh, something useful when when it's not really, uh, uh, you know, the first thing that you would think about when you think about a product like that. Um, mm-hmm. I know Gill Labs was a was was something that is of a very similar similar thread, right? Yes. But born in a pandemic, um, born for a different purpose, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. uh, it, tell us a little bit about that, uh, uh, you know, the, the Eureka moment uh, of the <laughs> labs. <laughs> right, right. I mean, that, that would have been the probably the most unexpected sort of mm. venture that I got into. Uh, the story started in the beginning of the pandemic and yeah. I was finishing my last venture and working on another venture actually yeah. I was trying to do some some hardware that I was working on. I happened to share an office with an engineering design team. Mm. I just have really good friends been sharing the office for a few years. Mm. And at that time, uh, pandemic hit, the borders closed. Singapore is a very small island, right? We had a lot of dependencies on supplies of masks, mm. um, Everything, you know, how can by PPE, right? So protective equipment. Then the government started calling for um, sort of innovation mm. right? in Singapore. Said, so what can we do? How can we help, right? Mm. Mm. And resources so tight. Mm. The engineering team, the, the, the friends of mine, and they, they happened. It was really happened. They came to me and said, look, I have, um, we, last year we designed a snorkeling mask mm-hmm. and um, it has a feature of you know very tightly sealed but very comfortable because you've been underwater you need to be comfortable the silicone basing we now understand the the facial um, contour of mm-hmm. many different faces mm-hmm. the way we design mm-hmm. the material to, to form to face and soft comfortable and they have some idea about can we turn it into a mask Right, because yeah. at the time, if you want to know that the, the, the material of the mask, the future material was in shortage. Mm. So very ingenious, mm. uh, a good friend of mine, John Luke and, you know, SC, they say, why don't we design this, you know, as the shell? Mm. And let's look at how do we sort of save the material. Say, look, we can actually design that holder to cut off the mask. Then one mask becomes six or eight. Mm. One this mm. piece of mask, you can cut into uh, eight pieces. Mm, and mm. because it's in such short supply, I don't even remember like, how I, much like, expensive those masks I, were, right? And, were, and they were reserved for the frontliners. And I said, look, we want to design something for the frontliners. And that's comfortable because they have to wear it for a long time. So kind of the idea was born yeah. very quickly because we had, a, we had a lot of challenges in the supply chain, being able to get things from China. Mm. Uh, we first we had a factory in China that mm. yeah and we quickly understood this logistic challenge That's of right. sending things out from China. Yeah. So we set up the, the the molding machine. Um, then we decided to divert into Malaysia because it's close. We can actually yeah. do a land transport. Yeah. Malaysia has a lot of different factories uh, that are yeah. capable of doing that. And that idea from the mold from the idea to we actually launched um, the first batch was less than eight weeks. Oh, wow. Wow. Less than eight weeks. I, I don't know how we did it. That it is amazing. Night and, night and, and then we're in the quarantine, but we got a special program. We're trying to work on this 
this product and we're going to permit it to work still um sort of just call right it's going and well, to who was your who was your first um it, was it uh, was it a hospital that you collaborated with was it the government that you collaborated with who was the first recipient yeah. of your masks we collaborated a lot with the government right mm-hmm. giving us feedback and the, the frontliners and the doctors and to actually our first customers um was through um our end users mm-hmm. so that we I, i decided to sort of create that so let's let's have b2c channel while we work on the b2b channel right and actually it, it, to answer like the the first customers were customers in we have customers in Canada mm. in the US mm. Um, mm. and um we have customers in Indonesia in the Philippines got it um, so we established uh the distribution relationship so i started working on calling all my distributor friends that i know and yeah um, some were inbound some were recommended by friends and people started adopting it and it said we want to buy this many and then ship mm. to canada Mm. and because of a connection we found a really interesting niche market at the end mm. a very mm. i tried in sort of different doctors right and mm. in hospital you have a little bit challenge sometimes mm. in in because they have the sort of proof supply mm. and but i started thinking um we started talking to dentists actually the mm. biggest adopters were mm. dentists mm. and you mm. understand it they usually are single practice they own their own absolutely and, yeah and they need comfort and then mm. really close contact mm. with the patients mm. and that sort mm. of biofluids exchange will happen right so that got, became sort of the we started building this community in that this community in the US mm. and sort of word of mouth got, getting into the community uh, we started shipping to the US and another is in canada another reverse innovation uh, case and example <laughs> yes yes i mean that is really true right? so the ingenuity of people thinking how do we kind of save mass it's a very simple thing but yes. mass one mass is very how do we turn it into eight right so it's kind yes. of small but how do we hold it right so yes. sort of started thinking um very fortunate to work with my friends like the engineering design teams just brilliant right and so, uh, so veronica team. what was your what was the 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 regulatory challenges of course because it was the pandemic uh things were slightly less uh i guess um uh, because they stringent. needed it yeah string, stringent yeah. right yeah so i mean the regulatory change the, the challenges you either target a professional user or you target a consumer user right consumer user yeah. there's no regulation so we did and we be, we we have a really vibrant sort of people start customizing their mask right for this followers uh, became a fashion thing that we had a gill mask the 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 challenge in the regulatory professional use is that typically a pp has to go through a stringent testing Mm. Like the TUV mm. and mm. you know all this sort of testing that have to happen. Uh and many places though in in the US you have emergency use um, That's access. Right. Right? That's right. That's and right. And then Indonesia has and so sort of they started sort of relaxing that that the usage and allows this product to be um um imported from other yeah. countries as long as yeah. you know let me sort of we we provide some sort of the worst specification this is where our supplies coming on this are futures are made with qualified material and processes mm. but then it was still a challenge because at that time there's a lot of gray area what can come in what cannot how do we know they are good or not right so we rely a lot on our distributors they have mm. the relationship with the local agency they will ask us to provide documents can you prove that this is done this way this is safe what sort of mm. materials are made and we shipped um actually we shipped a lot to africa as well okay that's great so i was just i was just going to ask you that right what's the supposed so the pandemic of course now the 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 dentists and the doctors are still using uh masks maybe the number of churns that they have to go through in terms of changing the mask has probably reduced but in terms of the usage the mask still exists right um where do you mm-hmm. see the future of uh, of of gil labs You know, to Gila was the and and 
sort of experiment for us, yeah. right? So I'm not actively involved right now. We have a team that deals with sort of shipment and the e-commerce. We put in an e-commerce and we let that sort of logistic being taken care of by our, you know, the party logistic team. There are a few things that we're looking at what we're still exploring is mm. that how do we turn it into truly a professional um, mm. mask that mm. goes through the TUV testing and mm. the regulatory approval in 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 Singapore mm. we, we got approval for as a class A device. Mm. So okay, a wonderful. Device. Mm. Yeah. So the other places we're exploring the same sort of um, usage. We are trying to get we're also looking at how how do we deploy this in places that are slightly dangerous, a like mining right. industry? That's right. So they would talk about distributors coming back with feedback. So why don't we do it in mining industry? Why do we do it in places that have a little um, sort of slightly more dangerous environment, maybe yeah. a, a factory that produces sort of That's chemical right. and stuff? Right? That's right. So these are, these are sort of the areas that we're looking at. Um, Wonderful. Looking. But super, super. Um, so Veronica, um, you know, you spoke about Gil and, you know, with the speed at which you're racing, you already started uh, uh, a few more <laughs> after that, right? And, uh, uh, you know, early really intrigued me, right? Um, right? I was looking into early. So I'll tell you how I stumbled upon early, right? And right. how I stumbled upon your your <laughs> profile and everything, right? Is when I was actually looking at early, I was like, okay, you know, we need to find a way to figure out what your predisposition is, right? Uh, what yeah. genetic predisposition do you have? You know, what can you do prior to actually, uh, you know, uh, getting in contact with the with the disease itself? So yeah. with just that line of thinking, you know, I started to look yeah. for, uh, for players, you know, who are actually doing this. And your right. early startup popped up, uh, uh, you know, apart from a few others. And then I was yeah. just fascinated by what what the amount of research that's that's gone behind it and right. everything and and there was always a conversation about about singapore becoming the biotech hub singapore becoming yes. the next kendall square of of uh, of southeast asia right yeah. there was always that conversation but i always wondered did we have enough uh, you know head run did mm -hmm. we have enough research did we have enough innovation and when I saw early, I was like, you know, I think, I think we're getting there, right? So yeah. just apart from just the innovation behind it, the look, the feel, the 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 concept um, mm -hmm. is just fabulous. So tell me a little bit more about what early does, right? And yeah, so <laughs> go ahead, Sana. Yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I I know it was. There's also a story behind how early started. So tell me, tell me yeah. a little bit more about that as well. Right, so early, early started in a, uh, a very interesting way, right? So at, at, I was sort of sort of releasing my responsibility at Gil. I was looking for other ventures to do. Mm -hmm. And I met up with the founders of Merexis. Merexis mm -hmm. is a Singapore-born mm -hmm. biotech mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. uh, very well-known. The, the local community has mm -hmm. the microRNA technologies. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to them and then this the first thing I was like, look, and this is not my area. I had at the time, right, done molecular diagnostics, you know, and mm, genomic mm, te technology. Mm. I was curious. So we started having a conversation with the founders and and discussing sort of, you know, what they are doing and what my experience was. And they then came up with a um, proposal and said, look, you know, we want to build something. Mm. Um, we don't exactly know what it is yet. Mm, I thought mm. Merexis has a um, RNA technology to detect cancer early, right? Mm, mm. So what they want to notice that yes, we can detect cancer early, but how do we how do we know who should be mm, going mm. through this test, mm, right? Mm. And so how do we then develop a business mm. that will kind of I guess this before people get detected, right? So what mm. are the things that need to happen, right? So we started brainstorming the areas, right? Is that prevention? Is mm. that wellness? Mm. Is that purely just diagnostics? Mm. Is that a healthcare mm. facility? Is that, mm. what does that should look like? So mm. that problem intrigued me a lot, mm. right? That's, mm. that's very true, right? 
and we 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 had this question in our head. So now, what is your? We know if you look at your 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 money, your financial yeah. portfolio. Yeah, you understand how much money was put in here, and now you understand your risk. That's right. right? We understand truly where we're going to go, roughly, right? And there's somebody more risky, somebody is more yeah. conservative, right? Yeah. We only yeah. we have our risk score. You have yeah. a credit score. Yeah. What is our health score? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What is your risk score for health? And you and I definitely are different. That's right. right. That's the idea right. was, then we want to kind of tackle this problem. But how do we convince people to to be part of this? Like mm. to want to know that because um, it doesn't exist today. That's right. That's right. 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 And, Maybe and, you have some biohackers and people are trying to do that, but so quantify self people. But it's sort of very limited and very techy. Right. So how do we get to the mass that people to understand what sort of you know risk? What is prevention? What is wellness? And this is in line with uh, with a lot of the governments thinking about population health, right? You know, how do we get to population health? It, it's used Correct. fairly loosely, in my opinion. Oh, we need yeah. to get into population health, but yeah. something like an early anamorexis is how you solve for population health, right? Correct. Correct. I mean, the population health has so. Uh, the, the underlying thing of what we're trying to solve is also personalized health. Correct. Right? Correct. Population health or giving everybody the same thing is costly to a government. That's right. right. You and I go for screening at 50 years old for mammogram, right? Like I said, I, women go there for 50 years. It's free. That's right. right. Now, do you know the risk? There are some people that actually would develop risk mm. earlier because of mm. genetic mm. predisposition. And but you found everybody through the machine that has radiation, right? Mm. Minimal, but to have radiation mm. and you have to invest in infrastructure mm. to, to do that is not effective. Mm. The buckets are leaking, right? The buckets are mm. leaking. Mm. Mm. That way, we don't know who and it will miss people. Uh, the best example is in lung cancer. I'll take mm. an example of lung cancer. Mm. The policy in the West, right, so developed in the guideline is you're over 50 year old and uh, 55, you smoke you know, two packs his, uh, mm. cigarettes a uh, history mm. year, and you go for CT screening, low dose mm. CT, right? Mm. Screening. But if you actually then we started digging into the data, and there's a lot of data that's already supporting in Asia mm. and Many many uh, lung cancer patients were not smokers. Yeah, especially for women, right? So we yeah. so we talk about this. Like women are not, and you know, over half the the, the cancer patient, lung cancer patients, women were not smokers. Yeah, and that guideline did not um, did not stand. Mm. Then how then we would be able to do like how do we screen for how do we get people to um, best use of our resources in the, in, in the government mm. to target people, you then should come. What are the different risk factors that mm. we have that mm. we don't understand mm. that? Then it can be broken down into you know, your genomic, right? Yeah. So the genetic predisposition, yeah. it will be your lifestyle. It Correct. could be your environment, especially for yeah. lung cancer, that yeah. would uh, play the big role. So that's precision medicine for us. Yeah. And it's sort of, sort of, uh, work, Early cancer detection, what Maraxa says, is a blood test, right? Use That's blood right. test to detect cancer earlier yeah. in stage one and stage two. And it's better than, you know, obviously getting people into LDCT or sort of radiation That's machine. Right. And in fact, they might have really good resolution right now to detect nodules, great technologies. But once you have that, the next thing is what? Biopsy. That's right. Surgery. And to, to test that, whether it's benign or um, malignant, mm. but that you put a person through this process, right? Mm. Um, mm. There's unnecessary trauma for the individual, Absolutely. but also a lot of cost. Mm. So the idea is how do we move upstream? Like mm. Blood test is better than just a radiation. We are not replacing a radiation machine, right? but what we have is creating a triaging process. Mm. Right. Mm. Blood test is a triaging process. So let's make sure the bucket is a little bit more precise right now. Mm. Right. Mm. Or getting the right people. If they have no risk, we shouldn't put them into a radiation um, risk mm. or mm. high cost screening tool. 
and before that, how do we get people to be involved, right? How do we get people mm. to want to like, like take part in this? That's sort of what the early concept is. Mm. We are. Is it like? Is it fair to say Almost that? Almost like the shop front. Is it fair to say that early is like uh, the front end diagnostic customer facing side of Merexis? Uh, you could say, I think a part of it is that, right? Yeah. So part of that we want to sort of show, uh, we always would say early is a concept, it's an awareness, right? Yeah. We're trying to just drive that. It, it yeah. is, right? We want to show that it, when you detect, when you have a more precise risk factors, um, triaging to, and you can actually detect cancer at a better accuracy. Mm. It's part of that. But we are, at early, we're quite technology agnostic. Mm. Obviously, we have Merex's products, but we also look at other technologies mm. Um, mm. that will support this sort of hypothesis we have, right? What mm. sort of other non-invasive, more friendly, uh, accessible technology we can mm. bring in there mm. to better detect Mm. Right. And sometimes also better engage, mm. right? Mm. If you do a big blood test and then you send to the lab and wait for you know a week or so to get the result back, mm. um, it takes time. Uh, so we invest in engagement tools. Mm. For example, mm. point of care technology you must be mm. familiar with doing yes. blood tests on the spot, yes. right? Yes, and passing on the spot for things just like glucometer. Mm. But there are the tests we could do to test for um, your cardiac conditions, your kidney, your liver. These are mm. lifestyle diseases. That's right. We need That's invest right. in that. Yeah. And lifestyle diseases cannot be tested. We, we, we would like the people to test more often mm. uh, because mm. when you are able to see the changes, it drives behavior change. Mm. That's mm. a big part about behavior changing. How do we change the behavior? How do we make people engaged right? mm. it's not a one-year thing because my company gives me this amount of money or the government is pushing for this campaign i go for a one-year screening and i'm done mm. Mm. right there's no mm. continuity mm. Mm. so that that's sort of the, the early as as a platform for us to drive through some of this awareness engagement um obviously better sort of you know funneling of a diagnostic tool that needs to happen if it's necessary and early if not, then early... it would be a lifestyle that's right. And your early um, uh, phlebotomist and your yeah. early pods is your next level or the next stage of engagement as well, right? Correct, correct. So we were, um, so w w when we look at sort of, sort of uh, barriers, yeah. right, of people being engaged, we're basically doing the things that what are the barriers of people to be engaged, right? Yeah. And there could be fear of, you know, I don't have time, I don't believe in this, and all. There's, there's a lot of different issues. One of getting the part in the full bottom is, is bringing access to, to people, bring convenience to people. Yeah. Bring um, awareness, bring engagement, right? Yeah. I send a full to you. It's obviously more, um, it's a lot easier than, okay, me coming to the clinic, I was drawing this right. blood, and I, then, and you have a thousand excuses not to show up yeah. on your appointment. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we, we were experimenting, we are experimenting. So, what if we just send a phlebotomist to you? It Got sort it. of works in the corporate health screening, right? So That's I, right. I was just going to check. Deal. I was just going to ask you that. How different is how this? That's right. So, how different is this from an innovation standpoint to the, the conventional diagnostic chain, sem sending somebody home to take your blood? So, a lot of time when you see sort of services, right? And then uh, it's, it's done by some vendors, right? Some, yeah. some providers. Well, we, we're not saying sending someone to, to your home to draw blood is a, it's a technology breakthrough or some sort of innovation. But what the difference is that what we're trying to do is we create that sort of first line of contact, right? Mm. Because early has other services that mm. we could provide to mm. you. Mm. When we mm. draw blood, we send to you, we inform you there's some of the tests and mm. you are then we're trying to create another touch point with mm. our in-house mm. doctors mm. to mm. engage. Mm. We mm. advise you this blood test. You can come in, but we can advise you over your telehealth platform. And so there are series of sort of services that we will provide post mm. just drawing your blood and mm. engagement. And we were trying to establish and relationship we're trying to establish with the users. Got it. Got it. And, and Veronica, what kind of uh, engagement are you seeing now? 
with with early. Well, so we are still early on. We sort of opened the door about like a, slightly about two months right now. Yeah, um, yeah. We had a lot of um, positive review. I yeah. think what the first thing that that we felt really happy about is when people come into a facility where they have experience of services is yeah. they will say, wow, this is different. Yeah. I, I did not expect that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's sort of the delight that we want to give to people. Yeah. The service and environment that then if you see the design of the center, we, this is really probably the first barrier to health. Isn't That's it? right. That's we say right. We didn't, if people have, when we were, experimenting with this idea a lot of sort of barriers were oh we don't like to go it's long wait time people That's calling right. my name and mm-hmm. i don't know when it's going to be um um when it's my turn that's right and i don't know how to read the result and uh, what's that for so, so right. what i do this right yeah so we 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 want to make sure we had a first impression of first experience and because of that people talk about us we recommend to friends um mm. The, we want we we have a big part of our customers are corporate customers, mm. corporate insurance mm. customers, right? Mm. Mm. So that um, we want to make sure that we give the best service, right? Look, there are many many different places, and then they are doing their good work, um, different health screening centers and hospitals. Uh, but I think there is more that we want to push, right? Mm. Mm. Is that how do we give the best technologies to people? Um, and they are happy to come back because mm, when you're not mm, engaged, no mm, one will come back. Right? right. It, it, it's just uses whatever technologies you have. People are yeah. not engaged. So it, it's interesting you say this, right? And um, and uh, congratulations on the on the feedback that you're getting. So a lot of this is also, uh, you know, so who's who's paying for this, right? It's constantly something that mm-hmm. comes to someone's mind, right? Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I also heard you say corporate insurance. Um, I, you know, so a large portion of your your current uh, traffic would be mm-hmm. corporate insurance backed individuals. Would that be right? Correct, correct. That's our Got first it. customers. Yeah. And how did and how difficult or tough was it to convince the insurance to come on board to this concept? Because um, was it was it positioned as and how did you position it, right? Rather than me giving you what it was positioned as, <laughs> that's the that's the consultant in me talking, right? So <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, uh, then then you you have probably a lot more template than I I, I, I can think of, right? That you know. um, so, so for for us, it's quite 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 interesting, right? Um, we I mean we. It, it, for, we identify customers, right? Who give yeah. us a mask, right? Who is sort of kind of bring these our first early adopters? Who that's yeah. kind of our DC? Who would who would want this? Yeah. Then obviously we then would look at different parts, and then sure, corporate insurance is part of this site. So this is what we have, mm. and we start. Uh, we have folks that in the company that understand the corporate insurance a little. We start talking mm. to friends, and mm. and we we talk, right? But then at the end of the day, you you realize that corporate insurance. Um, they sell to MNCs or SMEs mm. or whatnot, mm. right? The insurance company. And they need innovation, mm. right? They, they need differentiation at the mm. end of the day, right? Mm. How is mm. one insurance better than the other? That's right. And then how, how much differentiation could you get? Mm. Right? Mm. And then there has to be some sort of more than, you know, I'm cheaper, right? Mm. Or I'm mm. this, I'm better mm. customer service. So we, we, we work on that angle with insurance. Mm, How could mm. we did help you to differentiate your mm, offerings mm, to mm. your corporate customers, right? How is this, you know, we tell them, oh, this is such a nice environment and it's just great, right? They want mm. the people to come and enjoy the environment and, and renew the contract next year. Mm. Right. Mm. And, <laughs> so and how, many, how many centers do you have now, Veronica? How many, how many have you opened? We have opened one. Okay, great. Yeah. And do you have plans to to expand further? Yeah, this is, there's always um expansion plan. Mm. Uh, there are plans to we have collaboration with other clinics, right? We yeah. have collaboration with a chain. The expansion could be done through partners. So That's have, right. With That's right. Partners in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine mm. um, clinic chains. We work with very also progressive. And Very nice. The reason that we work with them and they work with us is that we see synergy in how we 
can work together. Perfect. Many times, right, when we think of um, preventive medicine, mm. Mm. the environment of Singapore is traditional Chinese medicine. Right? Mm. I'm not really sick, but I want a bit better. Or I have a little illness. I don't want to take Western medicine, right? That's right. That's right. So, but they complement each other, right? So we see the complementary. Right. And yeah. for, for us, they are also an engagement tool. Yeah. Think about when you see yeah. us in between, you you will work with our TCM partners. Got it. Got it. And and Ooh. are you? Do you also mm-hmm. have uh, the ability to see how the traditional medicine is also uh, decreasing their uh, susceptibility or occurrence of the disease? Is that also a f- a futuristic path that you're trying to take? How they could improve the outcome is that kind of yeah. So, for example, you're outcome. you're you're collaborating with uh, with a traditional uh, medicine, Chinese medicine uh, clinics mm-hmm. and players as well, right? So, let's say mm-hmm. you, my uh, I give you my uh, my blood sample, my mm-hmm. sample, my genetic testing, all of that comes back, and mm-hmm. let's say I have a predisposition to something, right? Um, mm-hmm. Let's say, for example, it's lung cancer because that's the top conversation that you and I have been having, right? Yeah. So. Uh, so traditional uh, medicine would probably give me something to say, okay, you know what, you you start taking this, uh, you mm-hmm. know, five times a week, this is going to be your, your, your lifestyle, etc. How do you, is there a way also to say that now your probability of getting cancer uh, mm-hmm. is starting to decrease? Because that's what you want to do. You want to manage their yeah, occurrence as well, yeah. right? Right. And it's a really hard, sort of long game right in yeah, this, in yeah. this place yes. like how, how many and and the TCM the community and the doctors they are doing their own clinical trials that's right, right. that's so right to form a, like so this the sort of you know sort of outcome that we, we could um, stand for is it has to be done through a really controlled clinical trial that's right, right? that's right we could see we we'll always see anecdotally like I did this and then my thing is cure and you know yeah. stuff right and then until you have a proper clinical trial, and like for us, we aren't, we aren't able to say that. That's right. right. That's and right. People will still say, we feel better. Um, this is how, you know, and and we come back and they, if something gets a little worse and they, the TCM doctor will say, oh, maybe you should follow up with another check and, yeah. you know, our partners or the Western or the clinics or the GPs, right? Yeah. Um, so we think we think so, but we don't have any data right, right now. To yeah, it, right? because I think you know even the Omadas of the world, um, you know that have that have dietic specific, uh, you know, uh, tools, um, tech tools, have also started to prove through clinical trials to say that you know what your susceptibility to to diabetes is is coming down, or even your overall diabetes as a, you know, has come down significantly post our tracking and, uh, and, uh, and monitoring, et cetera. Uh, But this is fascinating, right? Um, You know, I was also, uh, you know, listening to uh, Dr. So, your, your co-founder, right? And, uh, and uh, I love the line, uh, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he used in one of his conversations, right? Where he said, you know, um, we didn't succeed because of technology, uh, you know, because of funding, but because of people, purpose and perseverance, right? And, Everything that you said till now has that underlining foundation. I think that's why, uh, you know, your collaboration with Merexis early is 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 all rooted in that same in the same foundation as well, right? Um, now you lead uh, open innovation and emerging technologies for Merexis, right? Um, and that's your that's your new role that you've taken on, right? Um, so what is what is the role, you know, uh, 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 open innovation and emerging technologies? What is it that you try to uh, accomplish for Merexis? I, th- I think uh, it, it. I think of it as an extension of what early was about, right? So we gave birth to early this concept of you know being able to kind of incorporate different technologies in one place and yeah. give people, you know, the outcome is better preventive help, better early detection. Yeah. The now. When early became part of Merexis, right? Our concept is how do we expand this concept right now, mm, right? Mm, mm. <clears throat> From the eyes of Merexis today. So my so my vantage point changes a little bit, right? Mm, so I mm, look at mm. from the sort of RNA technology, genome technology, what Merexis has, mm. and how do we then expand this um, further? 
Mm. Mm. So from that, that that sort of drawing boards again happen, right? So we then look at sort of a lot of different um, complementary different technologies similar to Maxis mm. or complementary mm. to Maxis, and how do we then create product? Mm. Um, mm. And because Maxis has one, the core technology is uh, microRNA or genomic technologies. Other technologies to support, but our our mission is to save lives, right? Our mm. mission, big part of it, is to mm. um, detect cancer early. Yeah. So that was my starting yeah. point. So yeah. what then? I walked the line of how do I do that, right? Yeah. yeah. What sort of technology we should be looking at? What sort of processes we'll be looking at? One of the bigger sort of projects uh, that 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 we're working on right now is a risk triaging mm. tools. Got it. Right. Got it. Same thing. Right, we have lots of data. We talked about it, how much data yeah. we have, to yeah. get, right? And how do we use those data? Um, how do we then also add on other genetic data that that um, you and I have at the personal yeah. level or yeah. the population level? But we we need to first make sense of what data we have today. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's very similar to earlier, right? How do I triage people today? Mm. Mm. How do I help? My my sort of uh, our purpose is sort of a bit bigger. Now, mm. How do I help doctors, hospital, mm. insurance to identify who's at risk? So, so this is kind of sort of the big pieces we're going to look at, and from there we look at different technology, different partners, and how where the how we could whether we could collaborate with them, whether we could make products together, and, with and with, solutions together. And I guess with mRNA becoming a household name right now the barrier of actually convincing people what mrna is is now slightly lower right but um, in order for you to take this to your north star and would like to understand what is Merexis's north star right and where do you where do you where do you see yourself taking this uh, uh, journey to right and what would be some of those challenges that you're seeing as you're going forward because you know as i was speaking to a lot of other uh, early mm-hmm. startups uh, in this space uh, funding is still very conventional right slowly it's changing mm-hmm. uh, investors are starting to see uh, the light of how to look at uh, investments like this in a slightly different different way uh, and yeah. not purely financial immediate financial numbers because that's something that you will not see for a, for a while right so in your, uh, you know, judgment and in your perception and your experience, um, what is that north star you want to take Merexis to, and as well as early because you're 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 part of both, and where do you where do you see as some of the big challenges that you're trying to overcome as well? Yeah, to I mean the the, the north star is saving lives, right? Right. Yeah. We want to improve and yeah. saving lives. We want to detect diseases, right? not just cancer early. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that I, it, it's amazing to see this sort of the mission there, how people resonate even, even within the Rexus, right? The mm. passionate mm. Right? A group of passionate people um, driving towards that, that mission and vision. And, and it's not a straight line, obviously. We have challenges. Mm. Mm. And um, the, I, I think what, what, the belief that Maraxis or the team or the founders have is always a long game, right? Yes. So this is obviously, and having a genomic technology is, is it's quite different than having a digital health startup. That's right? right. That's right. Right. So when we look at it is there's a certain level of infrastructure needs to be put in place, a certain level of policy change needs to come along the way. And, and you know, infrastructure building can be through funding, can be through partnerships. That's right. right? Policy That's changes right. need to happen in, we need to prove, right? There's yeah. no proof of concept and investment need to make and working very closely with the, the public sector, which Merex yeah. is great at. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have all public sectors and all clusters, yeah. have cluster working with Merex's and they are actively involving the local uh, physicians administrators, yeah. policymakers. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you kind of look at that, um, in it, it's just a check investment mm. in people looking for a long game, right? Mm. Mm. Right. <laughs> it, it, we have a different type of I mean, investment funds and they had different pieces, right? And people That's right. believe in how can believe in this, this is the way to go, right? And That's like right. people believe in energy, right? 
Correct. Uh, clean energy play. That's the same. They didn't, they, there is a certain level of infrastructure needs to be put in place. So there's certain levels of the policy needs to be changed. But right. I see this happening in the region already. People being, like you say, if you understand mRNA, microRNA, genomic technology, DNA technologies, um, they see the benefit. They see the speed of being mm. able to turn our vaccine medicine mm. faster, mm. being mm. to be able to target um, therapies. Mm, uh, more mm, precisely mm, right this mm. is right um i think we're moving in the right direction right how exactly that should happen we don't know right that's right no it's, that's amazing and and what you've done in the last 20 years and what you what and what you're continuing to do with Merexis and early is um is inspiring to say the least um what i want to end with right uh, veronica is yeah What's that one wow moment, maybe in the last one month, maybe in six months that you've that you've seen uh, as uh, wow? I think I, I think I think we're doing the right thing. I think we've got this. That so we have. I, I I I I honestly I I don't see just one wow moment. Yeah. Honestly, to be to be saying that right. The the moments that the sort of little little moments that yeah. um, we have we all obviously were we had doubts where you know we don't know if that's right how people will receive it we, but when customers are coming in when people start visiting when we have um, healthcare partners MNC companies come and talk to me mm. um, and say we really like a concept this is how we should go right mm. that is sort of a reinforcement that we receive. Mm. And mm. we have the um, um, sometimes the, the, the government folks coming, the minister mm. coming to us mm. and say that mm. this is how we want to see this. Mm. This are the sort of little bit important for us that we're move, moving at the right direction. Mm. Um, that's how I would say. Wonderful, wonderful, and all the best to you. All the best to Mirexus and early as well. Um, I, lo- I look forward to doing a a, a, a lovely tour, uh, and which you've promised. Uh, to take me on, uh, Veronica. I would so. definitely give you a personal <laughs> tour. I, I need it. I need it. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing all the futuristic things that health can do. Um, as you know, I'm a I'm a co-aficionado and uh, you know, passion seeker of health. So uh, <laughs> so so thank you very, very much for um for being on the Health for All podcast. Um uh, I didn't even know how we how we spent the last one hour, you know, uh, going through this conversation. <laughs> it was absolutely lovely speaking to you. So thank you very, very much again and look forward to continuing to have these conversations with you. Thank you, Sonap. It's been a great pleasure. All the best to you too. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Veronica.